Welcome everybody. This is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is my Finishing the Bible in One Year Project, and we are on day 262. We'll be reading 1 Chronicles 22, 23, 24 today. We are nearing the end of 1 Chronicles. But you know what's interesting? Is 1st and 2nd Chronicles used to be one big book. So, <laughs> I guess you could say we're getting close to the halfway point of the Chronicles. So, more uh, chapters about David. Let's read. 1st Chronicles 22. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord, or Jehovah, God, and I like to say Elohim, so Jehovah Elohim, and this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. And David commanded together the strangers that were in the land of Israel, and he set masons to hew wrought stones to build the house of Elohim. I think it's funny how in the previous chapters we learned that um, God did not want a temple. But uh, David's doing it anyway. <laughs> I think it's interesting. <clears throat> and David prepared iron in abundance for the nails for the doors of the gates, and for the joints and brass in abundance without weight. Also cedar trees in abundance for the Zidions, and the they of Tyr brought much cedar wood to David. And David said, Solomon my son is young and tender in the house that is to be builded for Jehovah must be exceedingly magnificent, magnificent, <laughs> of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for Jehovah Elohim of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of Jehovah my Elohim. But the word of Jehovah came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Oh, that's why. So, maybe it was not necessarily that God didn't want a temple built for him, for the uh, Ark of the Covenant, but maybe it's because, you know, David did kill a lot of people. So maybe he thought that um, Solomon would be better, someone else would be better, rather than him, since uh, he shed a lot of blood. That makes sense, actually. All right. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Wow, that's actually really cool, because we actually found out that during Solomon's reign as king, it was so, it was like, I don't know, so peaceful, so, and everything was abundant, and there was treasures galore, and there was peace galore, and, and it was just an awesome time, for the most part. It was an awesome, just peaceful, abundant time, and it's, uh, it's cool to actually see the other side of it, because I don't think we, that we read that, um, God said this in the other chapters or in the other books even but uh, it's cool that it lines up with what actually happened you know during Solomon's reign there was no wars there were not any wars so that's very pretty cool alright moving on he shall build a house for my name and he shall be my son and I will be his father and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever now my son Jehovah be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of Jehovah thy Elohim, as he hath said of thee. Only Jehovah give thee wisdom and understanding, and give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of Jehovah thy Elohim. Then shalt thou prosper, if thou takest heed to fulfill the statuses and judgments which Jehovah charged Moses concerning Israel, be strong, and of a courage, dread not, nor be dismayed. Now behold, in my trouble I have prepared for the house of Jehovah, a hundred thousand talents of gold, a thousand talents, thousand thousand talents of silver and, and of brass and iron without weight. For it is in abundance. Timber also and stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add thereto. Moreover, 
there are workmen with thee in abundance hewers and workers of stone and timber and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work of the gold the silver the brass and the iron there is no number arise therefore and be doing and Jehovah will be with thee David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon and his son saying is not Jehovah your Elohim with you and hath he not given you rest on every side for he hath given the inhabitants of the land into mine hand and the land is subdued before Jehovah and before his people now set your heart and your soul to seek Jehovah your Elohim arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of Jehovah Elohim to bring the ark of the covenant of Jehovah and the holy vessels of Elohim into the house that is to be built to the name of Jehovah. Wow. It's just crazy to think about um, how, you know, they had so much success with David and, and with Solomon. And they basically, you know, were doing right in the eyes of, of the Lord and had, um, you know, great blessing and abundance and success. But then they... Uh, I guess got complacent after being peaceful for so many years that they just you know forgot about the Lord and took pride in their own selves and maybe you know got tempted through you know whatever means through evil means got tempted to start you know doing idol worshiping and um, yeah I just and it just it's a spiral spiral from there it's a spiral from you know Solomon's son and then king after king after king were evil, and then even more evil, and then even more evil. And then since the king's doing evil, he made everybody else do evil, and then he just, you know, spiraled down from there until the eventual uh, capture and destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Crazy. Crazy to think about. Interesting, though. All right, First Chronicles 23, Solomon reigns. So when David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel, and he gathered together all the princes of Israel and the priests and the Levites. Now the Levites were numbered from the age of thirty years and upward, and their number by their poles, man by man, was thirty and eight thousand, of which twenty and four thousand were to set forward the work of the house of Jehovah, and six thousand were officers and judges. Moreover, four thousand were porters, and four thousand praised Jehovah with the instruments which I made, said David, to praise therewith. And David divided them into courses among the sons of Levi, namely Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Of the Gershonites were Ladan and Shimei. The sons of Ladan, the chief, was Jehiel and Zetham, and Joel, three. The sons of Shimei, Shelomith, and Hazil, and Haran, three. These were the chief of the fathers of Ladan. The sons of Shimei were Jahath, Zina, and Josh, and Bariah. These four were the sons of Shimei. Jahath was chief, and Ziza the second, but Josh and Bariah had not many sons, therefore they were in one reckoning according to their father's house. The sons of Kohath, Amran, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel four. The sons of Amran, Aaron and Moses, and Aaron was separated, that he should sanctify the most holy things, he and his sons forever, to burn incense before Jehovah, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name forever. Now concerning Moses, the man of Elohim, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. The sons of Gershom, Shabul was the chief. And the sons of Eliezer were Rehabiah, the chief, and Eleazar, and none other sons. But the sons of Rehabiah were very many. The sons of Ishar, Selomith, the chief of the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amari the second, Jahaziel the third, Jechamim the fourth. The sons of Uziel, Micah the first, and Jesiah the second. The sons of Marari, Mali, and Mushi. The sons of Mali, Eliezer, and Kish. And Eliezer died and had no sons but daughters, and they were brethren. The sons of Kish took them, the sons of Mushi, Mali, and Eder, and Jeremoth three. These were the sons of Levi after the house of their fathers, even the chief of the fathers, as they were counted by number of names by their poles, that did the work for the service of the house of Jehovah, from the age of twenty years and upward. But David said, Jehovah, Elohim of Israel, hath given rest unto his people, that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever. And also unto the Levites, they shall no more carry the tabernacle, nor any vessels of it for the service thereof. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from twenty years old and above. 
because their office was to wait on the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of Jehovah in the courts and the chambers and the purifying of all holy things, and the work of the service of the house of Elohim, both for the shewbread and for the fine flour, for the meat offering and for the unleavened cakes, and for that which is baked in the pan and for that which is fried, and for all manner of measure and size, and to stand every morning to thank and praise Jehovah, and likewise at even. And to offer all burnt sacrifices unto Jehovah in the Sabbaths, in the new moons, and on the set feasts, by number according to the elder order commanded unto them, continually before Jehovah, that they should keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the holy place, and the charge of the sons of Aaron their brethren, in the service of the house of Jehovah. And First Chronicles 24.1 the divisions of the Levites. Now these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron, the sons of Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. Therefore Eleazar and Ithamar executed the priest's office. And David distributed him, both Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and Ahi, Ahimelech, the sons of Ithamar, according to their offices in their service. And there were more chief men found of the sons of Eleazar than the sons of Ithamar, and thus were they divided. Among the sons of Eleazar were, there were sixteen chief men of the house of their fathers, and eight among the sons of Ithamar according to the house of their fathers. Thus were they divided by lot, one sort with another, for the governors of the sanctuary and governors of the house of Elohim were the sons of Eleazar and of the sons of Ithamar. And Shemaiah the son of Nathaniel, the scribe, one of the Levites, wrote them before the king and the princes, and Zadok the priest, and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, and before the chief of the fathers, the priests and Levites, one principal household being taken for Eleazar, and one taken for Ithamar. Now the first lot came forth to Jehoiarib, the second to Jediah, the third to Harim, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Machijah, the six to Mijamin, the seventh to Hakoz, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shekaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jakim, the thirteenth to Hupa, the fourteenth to Jeshabib, the fifteenth to Bilgal, the sixteenth to Immer, the seventeenth to Hezir, the eighteenth to Aphsis, the nineteenth to Pethaliah, the twentieth to Jehazekel, the one in twentieth to Jakin, in the two in twentieth to Jamul, the three in twentieth to Deliah, the four in twenty to twentieth to Maziah. These were according these were orderings of them in their service to come into the house of Jehovah according to their manner, under Aaron their father, as Jehovah Elohim of Israel had commanded him. And the rest of the sons of the Yahweh were these of the sons of Amram, Shubil, of the sons of Shubil, Jediah, concerning Rabiah, the sons of Rabiah, the first was Isaiah, of the Isharites, Shelemoth, the, of the sons of Shelemoth, Jahath, the sons of Hebron, Jariah the first, Amariah the second, Jahaziel, the third, Jechamim the fourth. Of the sons of Uziel, Micah, of the sons of Micah, Shamir, the brother of Micah was Ishiah, of the sons of Ishiah and Zechariah, the sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi, the sons of Jaziah Beno, the sons of Merari by Jaziah Beno and Shosham, Shoham and Zakur and Ibri of Mali came Eleazar who had no sons. Concerning Kish, the son of Kish was Jerhamil, the sons of Mushi, Mali and Eder and Jeremoth. These are the sons of the Levites after the house of their fathers. These likewise cast lots over against their brother and the sons of Aaron in the presence of David the king and Zadok and Ahimelech and the chief of the fathers of the priests and the Levites, even the principal fathers, over against their younger brethren. Okay, interesting stuff. So we're kind of shifting from David's summary, David's story, to Solomon. So I'm assuming in the next few chapters we're going to be getting more into the details of Solomon. At least I hope so, because, um, I don't know, it's, I just think it's interesting, the time in which Solomon reigned. What a time to be living in, like where it's just so peaceful and everything is in abundance and there's just so much wealth and stuff going around and it just sounds like a good time, a <laughs> good peaceful time. So, here's the Daily Promise, Hebrews 13.5. 
Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. What a great verse, to be content in what you have. And we should be content, if you, th if you think about it. We who trust in Jesus Christ, who trust that Jesus Christ died for our sins, who shed every ounce of, of his blood for us to give us everlasting life, if we trust in that and have faith in that, then we have so much that we can't even possibly be covetousness, have covetousness, because we have everlasting life. We trust in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for us, trust in the blood, trust and have faith in him, and accept his free gift of salvation, then yeah, we have so much. We have everlasting life. So that's awesome. That was my reflection. Here's this person's reflection, and I quote, Content yourself in the riches of God's mercy. Unceasing are his gifts, and constant is his loving presence. This world is but a passing frame. It is not your home, for you, as a believer, are a child to the great kingdom, victorious. Heavenly are the rewards you seek, eternal the treasures you gain. Therefore, trust in the kingly majesty of the Lord, and ever shall you be pleased. End quote. Well, Amen to that. Trust in the Lord. And ever shall you be pleased. Yep, pretty much. I know it's hard. It's easier said than done. <clears throat> easier said than done to sometimes be content. I mean, I think we all struggle, as humans, we all struggle with being content, myself included. Um, it's so easy to just look at somebody else, somebody else's life, somebody else's possessions or their circumstances and be like, yeah, I wish I had that. But what we do have is a God that will never leave us or forsake us. What we do have is everlasting life if we trust in Jesus Christ, trust in the work that he did on the cross and the blood that he shed for us and accept the free gift of salvation. Then we have so much. We are not poor, we are rich. So, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ is something we have to do every day. Have trust, have faith, put on the full armor of God. Every day we have to put it on. Because every day is a struggle. Every day is a struggle to flee from sin, to get closer to God. That's why we must trust in Him. So, let's pray. Dear Jehovah, our Elohim, our Abba, thank you so much for this day and thank you for all that you've done. Thank you that we get to read your word and I pray you give us discernment so we can rightly divide your word truth and keep all that we read in our hearts and our minds. Please help us be an example to others and bring others to you for your sake and for your glory. Let others know about the free gift of salvation, how that Jesus Christ died for them, shed every ounce of blood for them. Help us be bold in telling them about the free gift of salvation. Now that Jesus Christ wants to have a relationship with us, and all we have to do is have faith and trust in him and turn from our sins. Please show us and lead us and guide us. Show us your will for our lives. Show us what you'll do in our lives. Thank you again for all that you've done, all that you're doing, all that you will do. And I pray in Christ Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen and amen. So, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. I hope you have a good evening, morning, night, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith and trust in Him. You'll never be sorry. We'll see you next time with more Chronicles. Bye-bye.